scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So in one minute, I'd like us to pray over these two issues and just ask God for grace. Father, thank you for the wisdom to be able to network and connect the Koinonia Global Family across every region represented. Technology has made it so easy to connect to the globe at a more structured level and at a deeper level. Someone is praying. Father, we decree and declare that this would not just be the ritual of a ministry, but that it will sustain within it the same power right here that from US to UK, from Africa to Australia, China, everywhere where this vision would find expression that the God of heaven himself would bless, thank him for the over 65 nations that already have people who are very structured in their participation, but we know there is more. The goal is the entire globe to be able to make our contribution as far as kingdom come is concerned. Are you praying? Now pray for all the pastors, leaders, business people, particularly people of influence who God has mandated and has sent by his spirit to connect to this grace for their growth, for their understanding, for their excelling even in ministry, I'd like us to pray that God himself will handpick all those who would be part of this. That in the name of Jesus, this that is intended to be a blessing to the globe and even ministers of the gospel across the globe will not end up being a disadvantage. Are you praying? Finally, pray that the presence of God that has been a signature in this ministry will rest upon every one of these platforms maximum kingdom impact that by reason of this vision pastors across the globe will be on fire doing mighty things for Jesus mighty things for the kingdom ordinary men turn to signs and wonders businessmen captains of industry who would find expression at a global scale for the sake of his majesty until the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and even of his Christ are you praying just one more minute Thank you, Jesus, for that which you are doing. We will keep going from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me Whoever you want to lift 
Lord, you can live through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Whatever you want to start, Lord, you can start through me. Whatever you want to end, Lord, you can May God find worthy vessels in and through us in the name of Jesus. May God find worthy vessels through us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And listen, let me encourage you. Just help those under the anointing. Do you know that every one of you, when I say you are part of this vision, I've taught you here, this is not about membership. This is an active kingdom participation. You must have that mentality. Whenever you come to church, don't feel you are coming to a ministry. You are the ministry yourself. Hallelujah. So you must have that mentality. Don't you think Joshua Selman is koinonia or some leaders? No, you are koinonia yourself. Are we together now? So that everything that concerns the vision, you see it as an assignment. Apostle, I don't know what I should be doing for God. Here is an assignment enough to employ you for the rest of your life. That you can commit yourself to say the nations must hear the gospel. The nations must see Jesus revealed and even glorified if you have that mentality then you will see every service as a platform for training not just you coming to casually receive miracles hear the word you give it a student's approach i told you that fans don't get blessed that is just a secular word it's, it's, and it's not wrong in itself the blessing is not for fans it is only those who are connected genuinely and those who would submit to learning they are the ones who benefit so for as long as you have a fan mentality a fan is a well-wisher a student is a learner a son is one who is ready for an inheritance there is a big difference never participate in this vision just as a fan you are not a fan whether you are in Europe UK wherever Take away that fan mentality and see that God is creating a global vision and I'm being part of it with intelligence, knowing that my contribution counts. Whether in prayer, whether in giving, whether in your physical presence as an active, your influence, whatever role you have to play, see that God brought you to make this vision work, that there is a vacuum that only your gift, only your experience, only your influence can feel. This vision you see is bigger than one man. It is impossible, no matter how yielded. There are some visions that individuals cannot carry. Individuals only lead the way as this mighty army arises to take that vision. And let me tell you this. What God is going to be doing with Koinonia across the nations. I don't say this because um, I'm very careful with words. But these are things I said many years ago. They are not things I just started saying now. They are things that I've said many years ago. It's an election of grace. It is not something you can end by qualification and all of that. No. So every time you come to church, please listen carefully change this mentality you are not just coming for service to come and hear a man of god no look at yourself as a warrior in training that you are coming to sit down and you are listening you are an extension of this vision it doesn't matter what church you head it doesn't matter what vision you lead by the time you have that mentality let me tell you this if on account of that which is taught here and the grace that is released here a church in europe a church in brazil a church in kenya catches fire and fans the flame of revival that is koinonia 
at work it, it does not have to come under the structure of the name we are interested in the impact and the efficiency more than just the name hallelujah if you are able to raise your children properly that is koinonia at work in your home if you are able to prosper and excel and rise from an ordinary person to get to a point where you are a multi-millionaire and a billionaire with a kingdom mentality that is koinonia at work there like the precious lady who came here that is koinonia we can't go to the marketplace but what you need is the revelation the dedication and the impartation don't you ever think you do not have what it takes we do not do this by our strength no yours is to be willing to listen willing to learn leave the rest for god the impartation the empowerment creating the platforms multiplying your influence it is god who causes men to advance people don't move just because they want to move mm -mm. But if God is behind you, woe betides the force that stands in front of you. Are we blessed? Praise the name of the Lord. I had some time to pray about what I'm going to be sharing tonight. And while I was praying, my eyes was open to a vision. And I saw such demonstration of the power of the Spirit tonight. I saw that tonight's teaching would come with a very strong impartation. I mean, in my, I saw people shaking under the anointing. And this is not an unusual thing, except that there is like an infusion. There is an impartation of a different kind of strength, a quality. It is some, it's, it's like a quality of God coming in another dimension. And when I saw this, I prayed for my own self. And I prayed, I said, Lord, everyone who must be touched. Many of you are men of God here. What you are learning, your members are the mercy of what you are learning. Holy fire. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, holy fire, burn upon my altar. Shalaska de brande gete barato sieda. Parado shala kreti kiti bara kiti. Manda brate keso da balako shada brate kiti bala. Krada gedu shala kreti katosia. Sabra dege de balando siata. Halas shadi brande ge bara tu siya. You are being strengthened in the inner man. Just for a minute or two and I'll begin to teach. You reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign. You reign, you reign. Adonai, you reign. You reign, you reign.
I'd like you to just take a minute or two and just soak in the glory. Lord, we are available. Available. Go ahead. This is how we grow in the spirit. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your, your power, your grace, your wisdom, your pruning out every flesh, giving us strength for the journey. I am under the shadow of your wings. Shalika de Banda, Shaika de Baranta, Sabraga de Baladamus. Don't be silent. This is a moment to receive. Jesus. Mm. You are accessing power in the spirit. It takes power to be mighty and to reign. 
you are accessing power in the spirit to them that have no might he increased strength he increased strength Shabakatoshka lebrande gedebala Shagadebala kosia Strength in your inner man capacity built and established in the spirit just be patient and don't be distracted there is a stretching that is happening to your spirit man obtaining fire for the journey ahead Shavrande ke baratos ke liga te prege te ke de bela katos koto branda gata. Shagra te ke de barantos koto brandi ke le katos kasi de balatos ya. Shada ke de pa katos ka la brande ke de balatos yata. Strength for the man of God. Strength for the businessman. Strength for the politician. Strength for the captain of industry. Mm. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pay attention to what you'll be learning tonight like we did last week I will teach and then we'll pray but like I saw in my vision I want you to be sensitive from the start of this teaching even up until we share the grace God is doing something and whilst the word is coming God is going to be visiting you uniquely and individually make sure your heart is open for some of you, while the word is coming, healing will come with it. For some of you, while the word is coming, lifting will come with it. For some of you, while the word is coming, restoration. You will be accessing the grace that will reverse things. Things that should be in your life and are not. That God is going to be backdating things and establishing them in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated and let's begin our teaching mighty god my teaching tonight is from zephaniah chapter 3 zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 zephaniah 3 and verse 17 The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. He says the Lord thy God, not just the one who is in heaven, the one who is in the midst of thee is mighty we'll be looking very briefly at the principles from this topic that really is the topic as long as it is the lord thy god in the midst of thee is mighty i'm teaching us tonight on how to access the manifested presence of god um when it has to do with understanding the dynamics of the presence of God or Lamy Day, the anointing is coming on that individual. Or Lamy Day, I heard that name, and the Lord is saying, You are entering a new season of the anointing, a new season of power, and a new season of grace. In the name of Jesus, a new season of power and a new season of grace. 
it will not be like before god is saying i'm doing something new this will be by his spirit you cannot be effective in today's world if you do not understand the mysteries that secure the manifest presence of god in the life of an individual please listen very carefully behind the enviable exploits of the saints behind the individuals men and women who are doing mighty things for the kingdom world over is this mystery of the divine manifested presence of god they have found a way of securing the manifest presence of god upon their lives upon their ministries upon their families upon their visions psalm 23 please what happens to a man when god is with you what happens to a man if and when you can secure the presence of god it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want verse 2 he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters it says he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil why for thou art with me not for the evil has departed for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me it says thou preparest a table for me before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over then it says goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell it didn't say and i will dwell in heaven more than that it didn't say and i will dwell in my home it says i will dwell in the house of the lord the house of a man is where he stays i will dwell not just visit i will make it my habitation i have found out that provided you are with me there are certain possibilities that begin to manifest in and through my life mark chapter 4 please from verse 35 shabash kuzabri andakata mark 4 from verse 35 media we together please let's walk very fast mark chapter 4 and verse 35 let me pull it up here so that we can save time. Mark chapter 4. It says, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Jesus now. And when he had sent the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. The Bible says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. The Bible says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Hmm. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him the bible says that the the wind the weather was not favorable the wind was boisterous and then it tells us that jesus was at the other side of the boat asleep 
and when he got up he rebuked them for their unbelief he said why are you afraid in other words are you not conscious that my presence has an implication why do you act as though my presence does not mean anything have you not learned what happens when i am there now that i am with you in the boat even though asleep it is still me i expected you to find confidence knowing that more than the wind that i was with you in the boat it says for thou art with me that means securing the presence of god is greater than praying for the exit of a negative situation listen very carefully securing the presence of god even if it is in the midst of a negative situation is wiser and more profitable than even praying that the situation should leave because if a, if a negative situation leaves you and you still have not secured divine presence that is only a temporal solution the devil will be able to find cheap access to your life what is the presence of God we talk a lot about the presence of God you've heard preachers talk about the presence of God men and women of God who walk in great power and grace will tell you that behind the exploits is the reality of the manifest presence of God in fact let me start this way as a way of recap I have taught you according to scripture that there are three dimensions of the presence of God as revealed in scripture there are three dimensions let me just say that for the sake of those who will be hearing for the first time the first dimension of God's presence as revealed from scripture I call it his omnipresence write it down please his omnipresence Psalm 139 from verse 7 to 12 Psalm 139 from verse 7 to 12 the first dimension of his presence is called his omnipresence whither shall I go from thy spirit he says other versions will say presence and whither shall I flee from your presence next verse if I ascend into heaven thou art there if I make my bed in hell behold you are also there if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me we're reading to 12 if I say surely the darkness shall cover me even the night shall be light about me last verse yea the darkness hideth not from thee but the light shineth as the day the darkness and the light are both alike to thee what a God both darkness in other words when God shows up it does not matter whether it was darkness or light before it doesn't mean anything his presence will make the condition constant the moment he comes both darkness and light are alike to thee the omnipresence of God his ability to be everywhere at the same time now please look up even though we were created in the image and the likeness of God there are three attributes of God he did not share with man it brands him and keeps him in a class all by himself he gave man everything including dominion his image but there are three attributes that God possesses that man does not have number one is called omnipresence man is not omnipresent we cannot be everywhere at the same time number two omnipotent man is not all powerful our authority in this kingdom is derived not generated derived from our relationship you do not have an independent authority outside of your relationship with Jesus Christ omnipotence number three omniscience or omniscience as others who call it it means man is not all-knowing the Bible clearly says that we see in part and we prophesy in part so if you ever seek to know the difference between God and man 
as far as the excellency of his person is concerned these three attributes brand God and keep him in a class all by himself man is not omnipresent when Jesus became a man he was not omnipresent he could only be in one place at a time hallelujah I hope you know that even spirits are not omnipresent just because they are spirits does not mean they are omnipresent you read your Bible there is no record of any spirit being omnipresent you could have glimpse of reaching into the future like it happened with Elisha when Gehazi was trying to negotiate the gift he said did my spirit not go with you but it did not mean that it was everywhere are we together man and every other spirit aside from God is location dependent you cannot be everywhere it is possible to be in multiple places at the same time but not everywhere are you understanding omnipresence now it is possible to be in more than a place I can be here right now and prophetically the Spirit of God can lead me to another sphere another realm that is a possibility but not everywhere and then omnipotence I am not all-powerful uh-uh no man is all-powerful no spirit is all-powerful except God once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power not some all power hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so it's important to establish that let's define God's presence what is the presence of God the presence of God I'm teaching tonight on the manifest presence the, the third dimension did I talk about the third dimension let me hurry up and tie it I didn't talk about it that there are three dimensions number one is his omnipresence just to tie that up number two I call it his Emmanuel dimension you can call it any name but I call it his Emmanuel dimension according to Matthew 18 and verse 20 his Emmanuel dimension the ability to be in a place where two or three are gathered in his name he said that everywhere two or three are gathered in my name that dimension of his presence cannot be drawn by an individual the condition is you have to be at least two or three people and then he is in the midst of them where two or three are gathered it has to be in his name that means if there is a gathering somewhere an occultic gathering or some kind of gathering just because humans are there doesn't mean that presence is there they have to be gathered in his name it says I am in the midst of them the third dimension of his presence is called his manifest presence or his Shekinah Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34 please let's hurry up Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34 the Bible says the cloud covered the tent of congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle we're reading to 38 next verse and Moses could not enter into the tent of congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of God filled the tabernacle next verse and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle the children of Israel went onward into all their journeys but if the cloud were not taken up they journeyed not till the day it was taken up final verse for the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night in the sight of how many so this was not just a vision for one or two people everybody saw it in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys the omnipresence of God everywhere at the same time the dimension of him that is revealed where two or three are gathered in his name and here we have his manifest presence and according to scripture you would notice that the first two dimensions do not have any physical effect they may have a spiritual effect but you do not see any physical effect 
but when that third dimension the shekinah or the manifest presence shows up there is always an effect in the earth realm directly hallelujah now let's define the presence of God what is the presence of God write this down the presence of God is the influence of his person through his spirit the influence of his person through his spirit in and upon our lives the presence of God represents the influence of his person and that that influence is administered here and now through the ministry of the Holy Spirit the influence of his person through his spirit in and upon our lives this is what we call the presence of God every time we are talking about the presence of God in one word we are talking about the influence of his spirit that's why I asked Dave to come and sing that song the influence of the presence the the spirit of God upon an individual and even within that individual is called the presence of God and that we are saying that an individual can literally carry that influence like a climate my God that you can carry that influence with you and that it begins to provide certain possibilities when you know how to host that dimension of influence you become a sign and a wonder upon the earth believe me ladies and gentlemen when it has to do with this teaching I know what I'm saying I don't claim to know everything I am a student ever learning but believe me when I tell you if it has to do with the presence of God and the dynamics of intimacy and the manifested presence of God there is something I know about it the influence that the presence of God and that influence can overshadow an individual not just to come and then to go that an individual can literally be immersed that's where you get the word baptism baptizo to be partially or totally immersed in that presence such that they will not see you again listen if I enter inside a swimming pool the only way you can reach me is to be affected by that water is that true if I am inside water a swimming pool you cannot access me until you directly access what is influencing me an individual can be immersed when you buy a product usually that product is wrapped let me work with your imaginations is that true so the product is wrapped and that which you need to consume the real product is somewhere and how many of you have seen very small products wrapped with mighty all kinds of layers of wrappings usually you can use the extent of the wrapping of a product to show its originality and its quality do you agree with me on that that sometimes you can buy say a wristwatch or a perfume or something and there is such elaborate wrapping and you're wondering why didn't they just put a leather they may tell you that that thing was ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars for a tiny thing but they wrap it in a way that it will force you to see the value before you access that product you will need to laboriously and sometimes you have to use a scissors use something to cut through the layers i am saying the believer can become that valuable that you are immersed in such a cloud of god's manifested presence it is impossible to reach you ignoring the presence Are you learning the presence of God upon a man and in a man's life guarantees the following please write there are four things according to scripture 
that come to your life you are guaranteed to experience them if you go through this spiritual labor to secure the manifested presence of God in your life are you ready number one the presence of God that influence if allowed to rest upon a man and that you are immersed in that presence it guarantees number one supernatural favor supernatural favor Genesis 39 and verse 2 hmm. Genesis 39 and verse 2 and the Lord was with Joseph is that in your Bible and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the Lord was with Joseph he was a prosperous man even though he was in the house of an Egyptian go to verse 21 same scripture 21 the Bible says but the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison what was the basis of his favor divine presence that there was something about the presence of God upon Joseph he was not the only prisoner in fact he was not the first prisoner before he arrived there were other prisoners but as soon as he showed up he didn't just come with chains he came with the presence and the Bible says it brought prosperity and it brought favor to Joseph number two what is the implication of the manifest presence of God in and upon a man's life are you ready rest roundabout rest roundabout Exodus chapter 33 please from verse 13 and 14 rest roundabout it says now therefore if I have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way that I may know thee that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is thy people next verse and he said my presence shall go with you and I will give you say rest my presence shall go with you and that is what secures your rest there is no possibility that means trouble will never end from the life of a man who ignores the presence of God it will be one kind of trouble and tragedy connecting after another divine presence can secure rest second chronicles chapter 15 and verse 12 second chronicles 15 and verse 12 we're reading to 15 the bible says and they entered into a covenant please look up everyone very powerful scripture and they entered into a covenant to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul is that in your bible that whosoever should not seek the lord god of israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman 14 and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets 15 the Bible says and all Judah rejoice at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their desire and he was found of them as a result the Lord gave them rest roundabout. I prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus, this is the season you will step into strange rest. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, age long battles, age long disappointments, age long captivity, it comes under arrest right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Rest round about the manifest presence of God that when the Lord is in the midst of you and he's mighty he can be mighty to give you rest not just mighty to give you favor God can be mighty to give you rest 
roundabout. Are you learning? Number three. When the Lord is mighty in the midst of you, finds expression as his manifest presence, what do you stand to enjoy? Three, supernatural protection and preservation. Oh, this is powerful. Supernatural protection and preservation. Please listen carefully, especially in light of the evil times that we live in. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Say I buy a product that is very expensive and the product is somewhere hidden in that package. Look up please. If I throw that package up and it falls, does it hurt the product? Because the product is so secure. What suffers is what is wrapping it, not the product. Is that true? How many of you have carried a crate of eggs not wrapped? not covered and you climb the bike or you climb something and only half of it arrived home because bombs kept breaking everything one by one now the egg is wonderful can serve you but it was not covered and protected those who do poultry business they have a way of wrapping that thing to a point that even if the car keeps turning it will arrive safely is that true the glory of god can become your shield and covering that whether it is by your left or right you can be so immune and protected let me show you a few scriptures psalm 23 and verse 4 we read that earlier let's read it again it says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil why for thou art with me that means anytime you see evil forget about the evil and verify whether he's with you if he's not with you find him fast don't be distracted by the evil you have no immunity against the effect of evil if you do not secure that he is with you for thou art with me isaiah chapter 43 from verse 1 to 3 Isaiah 43, very powerful, instructive scripture. But now, Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Prophesy, say, I will not fear. One more time, say, I will not fear. Fear not, he says, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. Verse 2. It says, when thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. It didn't say I will take the water away. Just, just know that I am with you. And when you pass through the rivers, it shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Verse 3. It says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. I am with you. Daniel chapter 3, from verse 23. Daniel chapter 3. What the manifest presence of God the Shekinah of God, that when the Lord is in the midst of you, he is also mighty to protect, mighty to defend, mighty to preserve. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. And Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Why? And rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered unto the king, True, O king. 25. And he answered, Lo, I see four men. Lo, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God next verse 
And Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And they all came forth, 27. And the princes, governors, captains, watch carefully, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power that means the effect of fire is not generic there are people who have seen, i told you that when you throw a product up if it is properly wrapped it is what wraps it that suffers nor was an hair of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them the fourth man who appeared in the fire the chains all of a sudden were caught and the people were moving in the midst of fire as though it were not fire fire that had been made seven times hotter that those who prepared it fell and the bible says they died supernatural protection and preservation let's finish up the scripture and nebuchadnezzar said blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god the effect Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of these three Hebrew boys shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Hold on. Do you know what this means? That there is a way God delivers that is like a signature you will know he's the one that, there are certain kinds of deliverances that you may suspect that maybe this is another kind of god but that when god shows up there is a way he can deliver nebuchadnezzar is not naive as to spiritual things and here he's saying that there is no other god that can deliver after this sort the way god will come through for you in this season will surprise everybody around you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again the way my God will come through for you you expect him to come this way he will come in a way that will sign his signature upon your life that everyone will know that there is a God that sits in heaven please sit down it is a risk to walk outside of the Shekinah, the presence of God, there is no guarantee for immunity. The Bible is clear to us from Psalm 91 that there are arrows that fly by day. You know the thing about the arrow? You don't know who shot it. You just know there was an arrow. If I shoot an arrow, I can be from my room and yet shoot it there. If I use a sword, you will see the person holding the sword. But an arrow can go in, in battles you don't know where they come from. But the presence of God can immune you. Can I tell you, if you intend to rise, if you intend to grow, if you intend to manifest the influence of the kingdom, please understand divine presence. Otherwise you will fall down one day for no reason and you probably might not be able to get up. Are we together? If you ever think everybody will clap for you because you are rising, think again. We live in a world that is immersed in wickedness. But in the name of Jesus, that presence will rest upon you and, and surround you and any arrow projected towards you. That, that the thick skin of that cloud will not only stop it, it can reverse it back. In the name of Jesus Christ. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, please give it to us. Psalm 3, verse 1. Lord, how they increased that trouble me. Hmm. Many a day, he says, that rise up against me. Two, 
many are they which say of my soul there is no help for him in God I love it I'm not going to sing it but I will recite it it says but thou O Lord at a hold on it didn't say you brought a shield you are the shield yourself did the Bible not tell you the name of the Lord is a strong tower that you can enter and you are saved from today anyone who plots evil against you whether by witchcraft or divination whether you are asleep or awake in the name of Jesus the son of the living God before you wake up judgment would have happened already please sit down now watch this in the New Testament Jesus gave us a very powerful illustration that while men slept it was time for sleep the Bible says an enemy came certainly that enemy found access there was no covering no hindrance did you know that there is a name Satan is called the thief question how many thieves will come through your gate and knock responsibly and say i came to steal the thief is a master at violating order a thief is not just one who steals he's a master at violating order a thief does not respect due process he tells you there is an adversary who does not respect due process And that cloud can cover you while you sleep and someone is making enchantments and say how can this person be the first to rise in this family let us conjure something that will bring him down and while they try to project you they think it's your face that will show up at, at, at that enchantment is fire that will answer right from that shrine in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you this I want you to believe what I'm telling you hallelujah there are many of you listen to me just when you want to rise and move and excel here comes these arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence that waste in noonday every time you see people rise and cannot continue something is stopping them hallelujah can i tell you this when the glory of god rests upon you you not only find favor you not only find rest round about you can be sure of your protection listen you can hold a gun to protect you your gun is only useful if your hands are not tied is that true and you can shoot and if you have the courage to shoot is that true there are certain assaults of the devil that happens so fast you will need to be immune before not during hallelujah you see by reason of what i do i'm not just glorifying satan believe me by reason of what i do this is daily i interact with people who were not covered you are my shield you are my covering you are my stability and my foundation take me to the place the place you are the secret place that's where i want to be i like this part of the song you are my shield you are my covering you are my stability my foundation 
shot you are my shield you are my covering you are my covering you are my stability you are my stability my foundation hear me when jesus started rising and he was making news in the town is it in your bible that some people came and gathered their assignment was not for him to stop their assignment was for him to die if it happened to jesus who flattered you into believing that indefinitely you will keep rising changing lives affecting destinies and then the gates of hell will fold their arms your church your ministry your voice your business no satan has not changed is is not only god who does not change satan too does not change he is the same old. from the time he became satan he remains satan don't you think your life will make him sympathize with you you don't know the enemy you are dealing with if satan did not pity little children and there was a cry in rama you are an adult why should he pity you it takes the covering of that cloud because if he cannot get you he will come to your children if he when he tried he wanted to reach jesus he started with peter then judas and he killed two birds with one stone because both judas and jesus died unfortunately judas died without jesus so he couldn't come back can i tell you this that covering is so powerful there is space for everyone who cares to enter that means you can't enter and leave your children you can't enter and leave your husband or your wife even your business can enter even your ministry can enter even your school can enter don't watch attacks happen around your life and keep wondering i want to know the name of all the demon spirits it is not necessary you just find that covering Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain